vulval disorders from bash guideline and tog articles will be our point of discussion today we have several vulval disorders and many exam questions come related to these topics so let us discuss them one by one here in the picture you see lichen sclerosis you are seeing some pale atrophic area with some white plaques fissuring erosion and a little bit loss of architecture as well this is lichen sclerosis now what are the main causes of lichen sclerosis basically the lichen sclerosis is an inflammatory autoimmune condition there are certain antibodies produced in this condition and lymphocytic mediated response is there that's why it is called inflammatory autoimmune condition and its incidence is 3% this 3% figure is important i have highlighted it in the red point so as to make it clear to you now one very important thing in lichen sclerosis is that it involves the external genitalia of both males and females now when we talk about the age we will say that it can occur at any age but females who are involved are usually post uh, postmenopausal or they may belong to pre adolescence age group so both of these age groups can be involved in the lichen sclerosis now let us study the pathophysiology you can see uh, in the picture that there are certain lymphocytes involved the t cells the b cells and as a result of um uh, lymphocytic response the local antibodies are produced this is exactly what happens in lichen sclerosis it is lymphocytic mediated response which causes thinning and inflammation of skin thinning and inflammation is very important because exam questions comes usually describing this point that there is thinning of the skin of genital area and inflammatory evidences are there what is the cause that is usually lichen sclerosis okay and auto antibodies are produced for or extra cellular matrix protein 1 this is what forms as a result of lymphocytic response and auto antibodies are produced so that is why we say that lichen sclerosis is an auto immune condition now histology is very important okay there are excessive collagen formation hyalinization of the collagen you can see here and hyperkeratosis okay you can see from this picture that there are excessive keratin formation hyperkeratosis there is flattening of epidermal layer epidermal flattening you can see here okay so uh, epidermal flattening what happens to dermis there is homogenization of the upper dermal layer and also there is vascular dilatation all these changes you can see here in the figure and hyalinization of the collagen and lichenoid band like infiltrate in the superficial derm lichenification is its characteristic now with what complaint does the patient present patient comes with complaint of itching soreness dyspareunia in case of vulval narrowing so vulval narrowing is a very important feature of it there is loss of architecture when we examine the patient okay that is why patient presents with dyspareunia and we may have other symptoms like constipation perineal involvement and urinary incontinence and in uncommon case patient may be asymptomatic as well so these uh, features are very important because when mcq comes uh, these points are highlighted usually it is written in the mcq that there is thinning of the skin and patient complains of uh, dyspareunia there is narrowing of the vulva loss of architecture patient also complains of these uh, problems like constipation urinary incontinence so what is the diagnosis that would be definitely lichen sclerosis now when we examine the patient what do you we see on examination we see that the area is pale atrophic 
and there are white plaques which are well demarcated there is fissuring and erosion of the skin and figure of 8 lien what is meant by figure of 8 lien figure of 8 lien means there is a, a circular formation of the lesion around the vulval area and also in the anal area so when two circular area combine they form a figure of 8 so that is the characteristic of lichen sclerosis and if in the question that is written straight away go to lichen sclerosis then loss of architecture as i have explained to you before and there is midline fusion with enteritis st uh, stenosis okay and as there is hyperkeratosis of the skin so clitoral hood is sealed over clitoris so it, it is buried okay buried uh, clitoris is also feature of lichen sclerosis now a very important um, feature of lichen sclerosis is that vagina and cervix are not involved okay unlike lichen planus so that is a differentiating feature from lichen planus usually um, the features might overlap with each other uh, like sclerosis and lichen planus both have characterization and white plaque formation but uh, if it is written that uh, vagina is involved cervix is involved so that would be lichen planus now in 10% of the cases the lichen sclerosis involves the extra genital organs like it involves the high under surfaces of the breast etc uh, we do certain test for investigating lichen sclerosis uh biopsy is definitely uh, a diagnostic incisional type of biopsy is done okay and when we suspect some certain coexisting infection we may take skin swabs uh now we have a certain uh, specific test uh, which is um, used to de determine which specific substances cause allergic inflammation on the patient's skin uh, about this it's written that um, in the batch guideline that it is rarely required and this is the disease which is associated with other conditions autoimmune disorder so we may do test for autoimmune conditions like thyroid diabetes mellitus pernicious anemia etc now how would you do management first line is steroid but ultra potent steroid of 0.05 person you can see in the picture as well and this topical steroid is advised to the patient the second line is second line is tacrolism now if we leave this like uh, like in sclerosis untreated it may result in squamous cell carcinoma in 5% of the cases sometimes the pseudo cyst formation may be there or se sexual dysfunction may be there or dysesthesia may be the problem of the patient follow up is 3 monthly after the treatment to check its response and yearly with the gp now let us talk about the lichen planus it is also an inflammatory disorder it usually involves the oral mucous membrane but rarely involves the lacrimal duct or esophagus and external genitalia okay so it's inflammatory disorder you have to remember this as far as the uh, antibodies are concerned antibodies are uh, might be present in 61% of the cases um of erosive lichen sclerosis okay but that is usually the weak circulating antibody now how do the patient present patient may complains of itch and there might be soreness over there irritation and dyspareunia and she might complain of vaginal discharge and oral um, symptoms due to mucous membrane involvement and sometimes patient can be asymptomatic as well so you see these features are almost similar to lichen sclerosis but uh, in lichen sclerosis the oral symptoms are not there now we have basically three types of lichen sclerosis classical erosive and hypertrophic let us discuss the classical lichen uh, lichen planus so these are the characteristic features which i am going to discuss with you and it's very very important to memorize all these features because exam questions come straight away from these points okay pink purple planus is p pink purple is p so whenever pink purple word is written in the question go to lichen planus it may be violaceous means violet in color and there are characteristic polygonal uh, plaques in the lichen planus as you can see in the figure there might be um edematous lesions and you see these are purplish pinkish violet um, in color and they have flat 
thought. Okay, flat thought. That is also characteristic features. Now, another important feature is that of Wickham's Troia. Wickham's Troia are basically fine, uh, white, lacy lines, as you can see in the picture. So, these Wickham's Troia are characteristic features of lichen sclerosis. I'm sorry, uh, lichen planus. These Wickham's Troia are characteristic features of lichen planus. erythematous and there are erosion and it is symmetrically distributed at vaginal endoid. Symmetrical is very important point here and it is also a very important key word in MCQs that there is symmetrical distribution of erythematous or erosive area. Now this um, lichen planus may uh, involve the uh, gingival area or vaginal area. So the term vulvovaginal gingival syndrome is used when erosive lichen planus involve this area. And here again, I would like to tell you that vagina is not involved in lichen sclerosis. That is a very important distinguishing point between the lichen planus and lichen sclerosis. Third type is that of hypertrophic type of lichen planus. Okay, so what happens in hypertrophic type of lichen planus? We have thickened warty plaques which may become ulcerated or infected and sometimes um, it looks like there is malignancy. Means the hypertrophic appearance mimics malignancy. Investigations, these are almost the same as we did in lichen uh, sclerosis, like biopsy is diagnostic, usually we do incisional type. And if we suspect any infection, then we um, take skin swabs and patch testing is also rarely required here. And we, we can do certain tests like thyroid function test and diabetes related test and uh, test to rule out pernicious anemia in order to test for autism immune diseases which are associated conditions with lichen planus. Now management of lichen planus is done with the ultrapotent steroids and vaginal corticosteroids. Ultrapotent steroids like um, clobetasol propionate and sometimes to topical vaginal preparations can be used and oral cyclosporin or retinide may also be used if there is systemic, systemic involvement. Three, yearly fo uh, three monthly follow up in order to check the response to treatment and yearly follow up with GP. An important point here is that the risk of squamous cell carcinoma in lichen, scler lichen planus is 3%. In lichen sclerosis, it was 5%. Now, coming to another condition, another vulvar disorder, which is dermatitis. It is also called eczema. We have three main types, atopic, allergic, and irritants. Uh, sorry, these are basically the causes. So how do patient presents? Vulval itch and soreness. And when we examine the area, we may see erythema, lichenification, okay? And excoriations are there. By lichenification, we mean that there is skin thickening, hyperpigmentation, exaggerated skin lines, etc. And excoriation means wearing of the skin. There might be fissuring. Fissuring means like splits or cracks in the skin. Pallor might be there and hyperpigmentation. Spongiosis is also there, which is in fact the intracellular edema and it is a characteristic of eczematous dermatitis. Diagnostic test is that of patch test, which is used to determine the specific substance which causes the uh, allergic inflammation of the patient's skin. See, the past test was rarely required in lichen sclerosis and lichen planus, but here it is of great value. And biopsy is only done if there are atypical features or failure to respond to treatment. How would we treat the vulval eczema? Basically, uh, as it is a, a type of allergic reaction, so basically we have to avoid the precipitating factors, first of all. Secondly, uh, emollients, topical steroids, moderate to low potential. Uh, can be used. In previous cases, we said that we use ultra potent steroid, but here in eczema, we use the moderate and low potency steroids. Okay, and uh, hydrocortisone one percent and uh, clobetasol propionate zero point zero five percent is used. 
Okay, atopic eczema is a type of vulval eczema. It can affect the vulva along with the certain eczematous condition uh, anywhere in the body. Okay, so there is extra genital involvement as well. And the typical features include certain uh, symmetrical lien. Symmetrical is important word. And scaly, the word scaly sometimes comes in MCQs that uh, indicates the uh, eczema, especially atopic eczema. So a scaly erythematous uh, lesion that are seen on skin, but uh, especially in the creases, where the creases are in the anticubital fossa and behind the knee. So in that area, so we may have scaly lesions. And um, this uh, point is also important. Sometimes exam questions comes like, um, uh, what is the most common, what is the commonest cause of vulval itch in children? The answer is that of atopic vulvitis. Now let us discuss the atopic dermatitis. It is the commonest cause of vulval itch in children. And satellite lesions may be present and have poorly defined edges. Satellite lesions are specific, uh, specific uh, points in the atopic dermatitis. The scaly lesion and satellite lesions. These are the characteristic features of atopic dermatitis. And the treatment is again topical steroids and emollient. Seboric derm uh, eczema. This is also a type of eczematous dermatitis. Uh, this is the condition which usually occurs at intralabial sulcus and basically there is glazed skin in the intralabial sulcus we treat it with the potent moderate potent steroids and emollients example like a topical topical keratolytic agent and one person hydrocortisone preparation coming to lichen simplex now very important point to remember is that whenever any condition which causes uh, dermatitis, if that presents for a long period of time, that results in lichen simplex. And erythematous plaques are the characteristic features of erythematous or hyperpigmented plaques on one or both sides of the vulva. You can see from the picture has, as well. And it is a pruritic form of dermatitis. What does it mean? It means that patient wants to scratch the area. There is excessive itching at that uh, specific area and when the patient does excess of scratching that results in lichenification excessive itching results in lichenification that is important point it is pruritic form of dermatitis now we would like to know what are the causes of lichen simplex um, certain systematic conditions certain environmental conditions psychiatric disorders Okay, systematic conditions mean certain body conditions like renal failure, like uh, liver diseases, obstructive biliary diseases, okay, environmental irritants, and certain psychiatric disorders like depression, obsessive compulsive disorder. These are the causes of the lichen simplex. Let's talk about its clinical presentation. Patient uh, usually uh, presents with vulval itch as it is pruritic type of uh, dermatitis, so presents with itch, and along with itch, there is soreness as well. When we examine the patient, and we see lichenification due to excessive uh, scratching of that area, erosion and excoriations are also there. How would you manage? First of all, uh, we will uh, tell the patient that she has to break the itch scratch cycle. Okay, she has to stop the itch uh, scratch cycle by any mean because that will exacerbate the situation. Okay, really the, there is some psychiatric condition involved and patient has tendency to scratch herself more and more. Uh, once she is educated that she needs to stop itching, uh, stop scratching, no matter how much itch she feels, uh, then she will uh, be able to get rid of these conditions. Okay, along with the patient education, we will definitely give some treatment as well, like ultra potent corticosteroid for how long? Two to three months. Okay. And uh, we will uh, give certain um, antihistamines, okay, uh, in order to stop her itching and cognitive behavior therapy as well, okay, and certain uh, psychiatric medications as well if required. Vulval psoriasis. You see the characteristic feature in this uh, picture. There is beefy red ulcer also called Salmon Pink's ulcer. Okay, so let us describe it. There is symmetrical involvement of the skin. Okay, and well demarcated lesion. The characteristic feature is Salmon Pink or beefy red ulcer. Moreover, there is no scaling of the skin, no scarring, no loss of anatomy. 
usually these conditions involve the flexural area like underneath elbows and involve the nasal cleft how would you treat this condition by emollients and topical steroids we may give the um nystatin the anti antifungal basically and we call dor vitamin d analog so these are the treatment of choice for vulval psoriasis into trigo is another condition affecting the vulva in which there is itchy skin disorder again this is itchy skin disorder like like and simplex okay like and simplex and into trigo are both itchy skin disorder and it involves flexural rash involving the gro groin sub memory areas and with candida it causes itchy skin disorder okay it is associated with the candidiasis as well so treatment includes emollient antibiotics and antifungals vulval candidiasis is also very important conditions and patient present with itch along with itch there is soreness as well dyspareunia redness of that area there might be excoriation marks like inflammation and fissuring of the skin is there and as it is a vulval uh, candidiasis there is curdy discharge as you know and there might be satellite lesions satellite lesions as i have explained to you these also occur in atopic dermatitis so satellite lesion when it comes in the question think about atopic dermatitis and vulval candidiasis now recurrent vulval candidiasis the definition is very important okay um definition from bash guideline is that four episodes in 12 months with two episodes having microscopy and culture where at least once the culture and microscopy is confirmed okay so in a year time there must be four episodes and for two episodes there must be microscopy and culture done and uh, which has confirmed uh for confirmation at least there must be one uh, test result showing the culture microscopy and in somewhere the definition is more than six episodes per year so you will see in the question uh which one is given in the option how would you treat uh, if we have acute uh, vulval candidiasis we will just treat by uh, fluconazole 150 mg single dose or clotrimazole pastry okay so just single dose um, will be given in the acute case okay but if patient comes with recurrent vulvo vaginal candidiasis candidiasis we will give antifungal uh, as an induction dose and as a maintenance dose induction uh we give three tablets af after every three days fluconazole 150 mg um orally for three days okay we give 150 mg orally for three days fluconazole and then three tablets every three days as a maintenance uh fluconazole 150 mg once weekly for six months okay induction one uh, fluconazole 150 mg orally after three days three doses in total and maintenance fluconazole 150 mg once weekly for 6 months now coming to vulval intraepithelial neoplasia the incubation period of human papilloma virus which causes vulval intraepithelial neoplasia is 3 weeks to 8 months that is very important and it is a dna virus now we have two types of vin one is usual vin second is differentiated vin usual vin is caused by hpv infection which causes warty or bacillus uh, vulvar squamous cell carcinoma and a differentiated vin is caused by lichen sclerosis which causes the uh, keratinizing vulval squamous cell carcinoma now there are different types of vin we are in 1 2 3 and invasive type of um, cancer caused by vin so the different areas of the skins are involved when it is invasive then definitely uh, the whole skin thickness is involved okay now how do patients with the human papilloma virus um, or vin presents patient may be asymptomatic or there might be uh, multiple lumps and these lumps might be keratinized or non keratinized now this percentage is very important that like the squamous cell carcinoma uh, risk in vin is 9 to 18.5% and in previous uh, slides we studied about the lichen sclerosis how much does that causes the squamous cell carcinoma that was 5% the lichen planus causes squamous cell carcinoma and 3% of the cases so you have to memorize these figures because these might come in exam uh, how would you diagnose vin that is by biopsy or by colposcopy and sometime for diagnosis we may uh, 
suggest the endoscopy as well. Okay, treatment is basically local skin. That is very important. Exam of MCQs comes related to this point, and the first line treatment is local skin, ablative or local skin. Okay, how would you do a local skin? That is by electrocautery or cryocautery. And in keratinized um, wards or in pregnancy, use the ablative methods. Okay, uh, so because uh, sometimes exam questions come that patient is pregnant, what type of the treatment would you suggest? Then we would go for ablative treatment rather than uh, other uh, treatments which are described below, like trichloracetic acid, protophyllotoxin, imiquimid, and 5 fluorouracil. And when we have uh, advanced disease, sometimes radical valvectomy may be done depending upon the age of the patient and uh, uh, the extent of the uh, tumor or lien. Now, this flow chart in the management of wards in pregnancy is also important. I have taken it from the talk article. So, when we have a vaginal, vulvar, or perianal wards and uh, there is pregnancy, in pregnancy, we just uh, suggest the cryo for uh, one weekly and review after four weeks and consider XCN. Okay. And But um, when we have one or few wards, we do cryo once weekly and review after a few weeks and we can switch to imiquimate or podophyllotoxin. But we have, when we have multiple genital wards, we suggest the photophyllotoxin twice weekly for three days and review after four to five weeks. And we may suggest the imiquimid 5% uh, cream. And if uh, still not clear, we uh, may suggest uh, XCN or repeat treat. Now, difference between the usual type and differentiated VIN is uh, shown in this figure. Differentiated type is a rare one and that is the most common is that of the classical type. Differentiated uh, type is common in the 60 to 80s and the classic type is common in the 30 to 50s age group. And uh, dif uh, differentiated type is not related to uh, HPV infection, whereas the classic type is HPV is related. Differentiated type is associated with lichen sclerosis and classic type is associated with the Bowen's disease. This differentiated type is uh, linked to keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, whereas the classic type is linked to warty or mixed pathological subtypes. And differentiated type is usually unifocal, whereas um, classic type is multifocal. And malignancy potential is high in differentiated types. Treatment involves the surgical XCN and emollients, whereas the classic type is also um, treated by local XCN, but uh, as the risk of recurrence is high, we may consider other treatment like topical imiquimid and immune response modifier and laser ablations. Now, coming to the Pagets disease, it is a malignancy associated skin conditions, okay? And it is in the area of apocrine gland presence, and uh, the recurrence is 50%, and it's common in the postmenopausal form. Patient presents with vulval pruritus and uh, soreness of the skin and there is red velvety appearance as I have shown you in the figure that uh, there is red velvety uh, um, skin uh, lesion and uh, sharp demarcated border. Okay, And um, when we check the um, cells under microscope, we see that um, there are signet cells, signet ring cells with large pleomorphic nuclei around typical cells with oval or eccentric nuclei and pale cytoplasm. So this is uh, the characteristic features of the cells of the Pagets disease. Okay. And treatment is by surgical XCN and surgical uh, margins are difficult to achieve. So uh, treatment is topical photodynamic therapy and imiquimate. Okay. Pemphigoid, uh, these are blisters and erosion in the vulval area. And these are subepidermal uh, blisters. There are vulval scarring, narrowing of enteritis. Investigations, immunofluorescence studies on biopsy showed antibody deposit in dermoepidermal junction. Treatment is my steroid. Basic disease. Okay, it is a chronic multi uh, systematic disorder. It is also present in the genital um, area and um, uh, it causes recurrent oral uh, ulcers as well. And ulcers are recurring. And uh, these are associated with the scarring as well. How would you treat the basset disease? Usually by topical or systemic immunosuppressant, also by modulators, by metronidazole, 
and when in the question it is written that it is a long term condition we treat it with the immunomodulator heteroadenitis suppurativa is another conditions it is inflammatory disorder affecting the area where apocrine glands are present in pagets disease you also study that apocrine in the area of apocrine glands uh, the pagets disease is there and also in the heteroadenitis suppurativa we um, we will say that it is um, inflammatory disorder affecting the area where apocrine glands are present and um, usually there are pus containing um, lesions like abscess and scars might be there deep ulcers might be there and foul smelling vaginal a uh, foul smelling discharge not vaginal just discharge okay so when these types of features are there think about hydroadenitis supported type okay and uh, also there is anogenital scarring with painful nodules sinuses and scarring bridged comedones are hallmark findings of hydroadenitis suppurativa uh, and they frequently progress to multiple abscesses and sinus tract formation okay so you can see the bridged comedone in this picture okay exact cause is not known but the hair follicles where there are sweat glands usually uh, groin bottom breast and armpits these are the area uh, where there are bridged comedone okay and squamous cell carcinoma has been reported in the chronic uh, diseases and treatment is by antibiotics and sometimes surgery if required now let us uh, talk about vulval itch this is from the talk article uh, when we have vulval itch and vaginal discharge or weeping of skin is there uh, we we uh, take the swab and treat and uh, after um Uh, when the patient comes with vulval itch we check whether the architecture of the vulval area is normal or not okay if architecture is not normal we can think about the lichen sclerosis lichen planus and other conditions and um vulval care regimens um we just take as i have explained before and treat uh, if confident with the super potent topical steroids okay but if the uh, there is normal architecture uh, we will check is there candidiasis if yes then we will treat and uh, take the swabs okay and uh, if we have the eczema or psoriasis uh, as um, there is normal architecture in the eczema and psoriasis this is very important point because um, in exam when it is written that architecture is normal uh, then we should think about eczema and psoriasis as compared to lichen sclerosis and lichen planus okay so in eczema and psoriasis vulval care regimens moderate potency topical steroids these are the treatments and if a inadequate response then refer for diagnosis ongoing investigation and treatment if not confident and if suspected um, can cancer refer via appropriate pathway vulvodynia is another important conditions it is a conditions in which it etiology is not proven and patient presents with pain okay it can be localized or it can be generalized it can be provoked it can be unprovoked okay so what is the provoked vestibular uh, vestibular dynia okay so uh, if provoked vulvar dynia is localized to specific area like vestibule then that is called the uh, vestibular dynia how would you treat the provoked uh, vulvar dynia by local anesthetic okay lignocaine gel sometimes physiotherapy cognitive behavior therapy and sexual therapy uh, these are recommended and oral treatment include tricyclic antidepressants like an uh, amitriptyline in severe cases the surgical removal of the involved area is suggested like modified vestibulectomy in unprovoked vulvodynia no specific etiology is identified and the treatment include the pain modifier tricyclic antidepressant local lignocaine cognitive behavior therapy psychotherapy physiotherapy if there is associated pelvic floor weakness now these are certain terminologies and uh, you can take screenshot and uh, just study those uh fissures excoriation erosion ulcer macule nodules and papule have taken this chart from the talk article and then we have other conditions like plaque vesicles like canifications okay um vulval conditions uh, in the form of a chart i have um, those are written here and uh, you can study that table by taking the screenshot i have already explained almost each and every point okay so let us come to the mcqs community based, based survey indicate that about 1/5 of the women have significant vulval symptoms symptoms and signs of the vulvar condition disorders are common and include the pruritus pain and changes in the skin color and texture what is the most common vulval disorder in a hospital setting most common vulval disorder in hospital setting is lichen sclerosis the answer is lichen sclerosis okay 
Sixty years old uh, uh, postmenopausal woman presents to the gynecology clinic with the uh, history of the gradual onset of the vulval itching and and burning. She has suffered from urinary incontinence for the two years. Examination reveals the vulval erythema and scaling. What is the most likely diagnosis? The list is written here. I would like you to pause the video, think about it, and then replay the video to check the answer. Okay, the answer is. Uh, I will tell you the answer, but first of all, let me tell you that although lichen sclerosis is the common cause of the vulval itching, it does not cause the erythema and scaling. So here in this question, uh, the common irritant include the panty liner, detergent, lubricants, and urinary incontinence. The, here in this question, the answer is irritant dermatitis. In another question, patient comes with a recurrent painful lesion of the vulva. On examination, she has abscess, scars, and deep ulcer with a false smelling vaginal discharge. What is the diagnosis? I would like you to pause the video, think about it, and then reply. Answer is hydroidinitis saporitiva. As I've told you that when there are abscesses, deep ulcers like bridge comedone. So in that case, think about hydroidinitis support time. Now, 40 years old uh, woman complains of burning and stinging in the vulva. There is no clinically identified neurological condition and there is no relevant visible finding. What is the most likely diagnosis? Okay, pause the video, think about it and then replay it. Answer is vulvodynia. Okay, another MCQ. Lichen sclerosis accounts for at least 25% of the women seen in dedicated vulval clinic with estimated uh, incidence quoted as 1 in 300 to 1 in 1,000 to fall patient referred to dermatology department. What is the pathognomonic histological features of the lichen sclerosis? Okay, the options are written here and I would like you to pause the video and then replay it for the answer. And the answer is hyalization of the upper dermis. Okay, thank you so much. Although it was a bit longer video, but I had to explain so many things uh, in this um, video. So uh, I would recommend you to study the BASH guideline and talk article for vulvar disorders in order to have better understanding. And whenever you come across the vulval disorder related question, um, just check in this video.